بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله He was born inside the place that billions face in prayer He was martyred in one of the best places of prayer whilst performing prayer He gave charity in prayer and was praised by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala The commander of the faithful Imam Ali alayhi salam loved his salah How can he not when he was the closest human being and the best student of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. How best then to honor the man born inside the Kaaba and martyred in Masjid al-Kufa who dedicated his life for Tawheed and the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than to learn from his prayers. Here are 10 out of so many lessons that we can learn from the Salah of the commander of the faithful, Imam Ali alayhi salam. Number one, the best preparation. Although it can sometimes be rushed or perhaps done habitually, Imam Ali salam recommends that we spiritually enhance the wudu by reciting special dhikr as well as dua for each stage. For example, whilst washing the face, we say, Allahumma bayyid wajhi yawma taswaddu fihi al-wujuh or Allah illuminate my face on the day many faces will be disgraced. Imam Ali Salam then goes on to say, if one performs their ablution as I do and says as I say, Allah the Almighty will create for each drop of the ablution water an angel that praises him and holds him as holy while magnifying him and Allah will write down the rewards for such an individual up to the day of Qiyamah. Amazing. Just imagine how many angels would be praying for you. Now the link for the du'as of the wudu as recited by Imam Ali salam is found below the video. You can print it, perhaps laminate it and place it inside the restroom or bathroom. Number two, know the magnitude of the prayer. The commander of the faithful peace be upon him is narrated to have said, if a person praying knew the extent of the mercy of God upon them whilst in prostration, they would not want to lift their head from the ground at all. If a believer is praying, the Imam Ali Salam says in another narration, Iblis Shaitan looks at them with much envy when they notice the great extent of God's mercy being showered upon them. Once he told Muhammad bin Abu Bakr, Know, O Muhammad, that everything follows on from your prayers. So if you waste it, you waste everything else. An important reminder, therefore, to make Salah center stage in our lives. Check how we do it and empower ourselves with knowledge on how to improve its performance. Number three, the final deed. If any one of us were told that we have 10 minutes remaining in our lives, what would we do? In a narration, Imam Ali salam states, when you stand in Salah, pray the prayer of one who is bidding farewell to this world i.e. perform it in the best way, don't rush it and try to focus with your heart. Imam Ali salam categorically states, Man Whomsoever performs the prayer whilst cognizant of his status, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives their sins. Number four, the physical respect. If a human being is in their salah, their body, clothes and everything around them will be glorifying God. Imam Ali salam is reported to have said, that means what we wear in prayer should be suitable, clean, as well as our bodies should be nicely fragranced. Number five, seeking that awe of Allah. Sometimes people are distracted during salah by what's around them or their own bodies or in fact their clothes. Indeed, Imam Ali salam is reported to have said, don't play with your beard or anything else that distracts you during prayer. Try to have khushu', which is humility and awe of God in your heart so that the limbs will be humble too. In another instance, Imam Ali salam warns of praying whilst tired or sleepy. He states, if you're praying and your eyes are sleepy, stop the prayer and go to sleep. For if you actually continue, you don't know whether you're praying for yourself or against yourself. Number six, the unnecessary delay. 
Quoting an ayah from the Holy Quran, chapter 74, verses 42 and 43, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us how some of the inhabitants of hell are asked why they're being punished. Actually answer, we were not of those who prayed. Imam Ali alayhi salam strongly encourages the respecting of the prayer by performing it at its time and not unnecessarily delaying it or in fact missing it. In another narration he states, it has been prescribed by the Almighty at these times for a specific reason, so don't neglect it. Number seven, understanding the actions. Once he was asked by an individual about the meaning of the actions of prayer, Imam Ali salam replied, your takbir means Allah is above being described. In Ruku' after a while he states, when you extend your neck, it means I'm willing to be beheaded because of my faith. When you raise your head after Ruku', you testify that Allah is the one who has brought us into existence actually hears us. In the first prostration of sujood, you think about how he created us from soil. Then raising the head means Allah is giving us life. And then the second sajda refers to being buried. When we raise our head second time, it refers to being resurrected on the day of Qiyamah, judgment. He continues describing other parts of prayer until he states, whomsoever does not comprehend this, their prayers are incomplete. The aftermath, after prayer, sit to reflect and perform some dhikr. Imam Ali salam recommends this. He says, if you do so, the angels will keep praying for you and I so long as we're sitting on the prayer mat. In several narrations, Imam Ali salam recommends, for example, the recitation of Ayatul Kursi after Salah, where he states it helps in the acceptance of the prayer. And of course, it is a means by which we gain protection and blessings from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number nine, Salah in unity. Once in Kufa, Imam Ali salam heard about a group of people who live close to the masjid but refused to pray in congregation. He then said they should attend and take part in Salatul Jama'ah, otherwise let them turn away from us. He would emphasize this prayer of congregation even between the husband and wife since narrations tell us it's at least 24 times more rewarding. Number 10, the sweetness of the night. Amir al muminin the commander of the faithful, Ali ibn Abi Talib, peace and blessings be upon him, loved his night prayers. He would famously say, I have not missed Salatul Layl since I heard the Prophet of Islam, peace be upon him and his family say, Salatul Layl Noor. He even performed it during the most ferocious night in the Battle of Safin, known as Laylatul Harir. Once someone who tried to perform Salatul Layl could not, asked Imam Ali why he couldn't. Imam said to him, it's because the sins are stopping him from the performance of the night prayer. The commander of the faithful therefore advises us to perform night prayer because according to him, it's the health of the body, pleasure of the Lord, and the downpouring of mercy, as well as following the akhlaq of the prophets. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us tawfiq and permission to follow in the footsteps of this great human being. وبالله عدو والحسن